Good evening, and welcome to a terrifying episode of True Believers. I'm James, and of course, this is our good friend, Sean, from Free Lunch. Yep. How's it going, man? Good. Thank you for uh, letting me join you this episode. Of course. Well, you're one of us. Yep. One of us. We <laughs> wabba, we so, uh, yeah, this time we're doing kind of a spooktacular episode. We got Tomb of Dracula, issue five. Uh, there's mail in it, which is exciting. Uh, Tomb of Dracula was a Marvel comic that was published in the 70s. Um, my actual uh, first encounter with it, and it, of course it's about Dracula. but uh, The my, Lord of Vampires. The Lord of the Vampires, yes, that's right. He even appeared in a Buffy episode. <laughs> it's a really terrible episode. But, um, so my f- first... Um, the first time I actually seen anything with Tomb of Dracula was in one of my Spider-Man books. There was a giant-sized Spider-Man where he actually teamed up with Dracula. It was as bad as it sounds. <laughs> but, you know, just one of those things. Um, I believe a very popular character, Blade, started out in this book. Oh, yes. I yeah, don't... I went to the movie series? Yes, yeah, that's right, with uh, Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Um, you know, and I, I really, I don't do research. I, I'm sorry, we don't prepare for this mm-hmm. show. If I would have thought about it beforehand, I would have looked up what issue he came in and did that instead of this one, but whatever, we're doing issue number five. Oh, wait, um, you have a I, tablet of some sort. Yeah, uh, Blade says the son of a woman bitten by a vampire during childbirth. Mm. Um, but as for which, as for which, uh, which volume, issue? yeah, I don't have that information. Mm. Well, we tried. Right. I'm sorry. We failed. We, fa- <laughs> we failed. So. This is a spooky episode. <laughs> yeah. it's my worst nightmare. By, by the end of the episode, we both kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the tortured screams of us as we uh, strangle ourselves. So anyway, yeah, uh, <laughs> on that note. So uh, speaking of Dracula and spooky, I also really liked uh, when I was a kid the Castlevania series. Um, well, you liked it as well, didn't you? Yeah, I liked the uh, the NES versions. Uh, the the second one. Which is weird because I could never play that one. It was confusing. Uh, that was the one where it goes to nighttime. Right. Uh, or you'll have daylight and nighttime. And uh, whenever it goes to night, Simon, like I guess it's Simon saying it. He says, what a terrible night for a curse. But uh, I could never beat that. I just didn't understand it. It was kind of a weird one, wasn't it? Like yeah, um, a lot of puzzles and stuff. Yeah, like you'd have to take like a orb to a certain point and crouch down for so long, and, you'd, and a, a tornado would take you away. <laughs> How would you know to do that? Yeah, Nintendo power. Nintendo power. <laughs> and I never actually owned it. I borrowed it from a friend in in middle school. Oh yeah. But you know, long enough that I could play for a while. Okay. Uh, I liked it enough that I ended up buying the, whatever the first Game Boy Castlevania was, and it was terrible. Really? <laughs> it was not, um, the Game Boy just doesn't have, it, it was a lot of like jumping to, uh, over pits sort of stuff. Ooh, and, fun. And, That's always fun. <laughs> right. And the, the first Game Boy just didn't have the, the sensitivity for that, or I didn't, I don't know which. Well... Yeah, I know how that goes with, you know, with a lot of Game Boy games. Um, like, for instance, I have a personal grudge against Metroid 2 on Game Boy. Mm. That was the only classic Metroid game that I couldn't beat. I didn't get it. Like, even though it was the same thing, it's like, how am I supposed to know where I'm going if every room looks exactly the same and there's no color? <laughs> what is the point of this? So, yeah, I, I do get that. And even, like, you were talking about earlier Mario Land. Yeah, I was not a fan of Mario Land. I, I kind of was. <laughs> yeah. Like, but, you know, it is it is one of the worst ones. Did you ever play Mario Land 2? No, no. no. That one wasn't bad. It was like a really short Mario World. Hmm. But, yeah, there you go. Hmm. 
terrifying. It's <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> horrifying. <Yeah. laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, as far as, like, Tomb of Dracula and stuff, that was... The comics code started lifting a little bit around this time, and... Marvel and DC could now go back to making violent comics like they were in the 40s. And they went all out with the uh, like to, uh, Tomb of Dracula. There were there were some others too that I've never read. Like Werewolf by Night, I guess, was really popular. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Frankenstein one, which I forget which that one's called. Of course, now we have Marvel Zombies. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the Marvel Zombies, uh, which did... It came out, it was a five-part series, the first original. Something like that, yeah. yeah. It was around, 2000, was it 2005? Don't quote me on that. Uh, something yeah, around, something like that, yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago. Now, you're the expert on Marvel Zombies between the two of us, I think. Right, I, re I read the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens in Marvel Zombies? Um, I, I mean, <laughs> or are you reading the, the Wikipedia page again? <laughs> Well, I'm just bringing it up so I can remember. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I know that um, it has to do with a, an alternative universe and uh, an original, I, and I believe it's an unnamed superhero that has the, the hunger, which is mm. for human flesh or superhuman flesh, I guess, too. Um, he infects the superheroes in this alternative universe. Um, and it ends up the, the acolytes are on asteroid M. Mm. So they're saved from the, well, all the other superheroes are infected. They, they are there to, and I guess it deals with, uh, is it Gage? Um, I believe it's his name. That, that might not be correct, <laughs> but, uh, I, I find it interesting that, that Marvel, Marvel's uh, world is so like like their fan base is so into this world that the accolades are like the are like prominent heroes of this story. Like I don't even remember. I I mean I remember who they are, but that's getting pretty uh, pretty deep, uh, mm -hmm. pretty pretty hardcore. Um. Forge. I said Gage. Oh, Forge. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, even Forge. Like, I, I think I've talked about him, like, so much. You know you know what his power is, right? He's, just, he's good at building things. <laughs> yeah. So he's kind of like Iron, uh, Iron Man without money? Yeah. What, what's funny is, what's funny is, why does he hang out with these mutants who, who have been shunned from humanity for their gifts? It's like... You know what? Your gift is not a curse, dude. Your mm -hmm. gift is called a career skill. Yeah, like go with it, okay? Yeah. God, like, like, like that's just one thing I never understood. But uh, so he's a main character in that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God uh, for Wikipedia. <laughs> right. Um, I believe he becomes friends with Black Panther. Oh yeah. They work together to um, end the hunger. Really, I I have heard actually that the Black Panther doesn't become a zombie in that, or excuse me, a hungry. I don't know what they call them. Uh, yeah, I believe zombies. Zombie. Yeah, and, and it also deals with the Galactus arriving on this zombie planet. Really? Zombie Earth. Yeah. Silver Surfer comes to warn them, announce that uh, the the world's going to be eaten, and they eat. They. Uh, Turn they eat him. Silver Wait a minute. <laughs> what? The zombie superheroes eat Galactus in this. Uh, no, Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer eats Galactus. <laughs> what? <laughs> the zombies eat uh, Silver Surfer. Oh, okay, okay. He comes. He's like, guys, you gotta chill. You know who's coming? And then they're like, eh, we'll just take a little bite. That's really him. funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, one thing that I, even though I've never really read it, uh, one thing that I really liked about the Marvel Zombies thing is taking famous classic covers and zombifying them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you've got the issue where, like, what we're using for our cover page right now on our Facebook, um, with, uh, where Peter and Mary Jane, or Spider-Man and Mary Jane are 
they get married in it. Well, they're zombies now. And then there's uh, Amazing Fantasy number 15, Zombified. I mean, there's, um, you know, so many classic ones. One that they never did that I wish they did was the Demon in the Bottle storyline for Iron Man. That's the one where... Iron Man, where Tony's like sweat, like, you know, he can't handle his liquor and he's sweating and holding this bottle of like Jameson or something, looking in the mirror. Like, I would love to see like a horrified drunk zombie <laughs> looking at himself. I wonder why they never did that one. That would have been good. But, uh, yeah. Marvel zombies. Yeah. So I, I believe that's basically. It. Oh, I did hear something about Marvel Zombies that uh, I think is hilarious. Um, Ant-Man eats the wasp in that. Oh. So no matter what continuity you're doing with Marvel, pretty much Ant-Man is always either beating the wasp or eating her. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, it's like, screw it. Like, I guess, they, I guess people want a horrible marriage between these two. You gotta give them what they want. <laughs> It's the foundation. Their marriage isn't super. No, it's not. No, it's not. So yeah, Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies. That's a. It's a good thing. Um, you know we've got you know this is our spectacular Spider-Man issue. Uh, what? Um, you know while we're at it, did you watch any horror movies? This year for Halloween. Uh, I haven't yet this season. We watched Hocus Pocus last night. Not really. Hocus a... Pocus, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but isn't that with Bette Midler? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> diva. Um, but uh, as far as like, I if I had to talk about movies that have stuck with me, uh, some of them are like pure horror. Others just have that sort of something about them that sticks with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, for example, Clockwork Orange, not particularly a horror movie, but I remember the first time I saw it, I mean, it left me with like a sick feeling. Yeah, me too. Me too. I was probably, how old were you? I was like 18, I think. I I was in high school, yeah. Yeah. And and I was not prepared for that ultraviolence. You you watch (laughs) like, uh, you know, movies with blood and guts and stuff like that and it doesn't it doesn't affect you well you watch clockwork orange and just i don't know just let, leaves your stomach upset yeah it does yeah it does it's a it and i mean later on when you watch it again you really realize what an amazing movie it is but, yeah i can watch it now though but problem. the first time yeah and the first time you see it you're usually in high school and you're like whoa what is that yeah and uh, or, we're just going through his uh, DVD collection yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, American Psycho. Um, it was really the book, not the the movie. Um, it's meant as a like a dark comedy sort of yeah. thing. But the the book, reading the book, there were moments where I had to like put the book down. Really, where it's like I needed to calm down for a second. What? Uh, I've never actually read the book, and I've been meaning to for a while. So you definitely recommend it then. Yeah, I I mean it. It like became not. I don't want to say emotional, like, but like, it freaked me out in enough that I would have to stop reading. I can't. Mm. Um, maybe some there's some H.P. Lovecraft stories that could do that to me, but uh, so <laughs> like for, the like, one modern. like 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 the Reanimator or something. Like that. Uh, the Color Out of Space. I'm thinking of that oh, one. Oh yeah. I had to like stop reading it was like intense and it's not like there's any moments that are really scary or anything like that but for some reason it was like okay just breathe yeah um but yeah american psycho the movie not so much the novel it it was something that like stuck with me really and i I, it was one of those weird times where i had read the book before i saw the movie um and the movie doesn't come close to but it's a great movie. Really? Yeah, and yeah, I was about to say it is a great movie. But it's great in a different way than the book. And I'm I wouldn't even say the book's great, but it's worth a read. You know a book that I really that I just read last year that I really love, and it's the only Stephen King book I've ever read, and it's made a believer out of me. Um, The Stand. And actually I saw the miniseries when I was nine or ten. Um but uh I, I liked it. I don't think I want to watch it again because it's a mini series and I'm mm-hmm. sure it sucks. 
But uh, and I've seen some of the casting, like Rob Lowe and uh, and um, you know, just one of those things. But um, the book was just phenomenal, and uh, and it's basically like good versus evil, right? It is. It is, and it it's kind of it's basically just. I I've heard Stephen King say that he just wanted to do like a modern Hobbit. Or modern Lord of the Rings, kind of. Huh. But um, it's like Boulder versus Las Vegas, you know. I mean, it's it's corny, but um, during the first part, when everyone is dying from the super flu, Captain Trips, as they call it in the book, it's, I guess, 70s, I don't know. But uh, when everyone's dying from Captain Trips, that is pretty intense. Like like, And then the second part, they're all coming together because of psychic energy they're all heading towards boulder or something but uh mm-hmm. the third part of the book that's when it gets a little cheesy because the villain randall flag i know that's his name really isn't all that scary mm-hmm. he's just kind of corny but by that point you're like well i might as well just finish it anyway i mean it, it's not bad it's just kind of a cheesy villain mm-hmm. but it it really was one of my favorite books that i've read in a long time it's good because I haven't, I have not read it, nor have I seen the uh, mini series. Actually, I recommend it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do you have here? Uh, besides American Star? Alien, the first, the first yeah. Alien movie, and that movie is one of those things where my parents don't have enough sense to not <laughs> let me watch it. Um, and, to, even today, right, your parents still they still you watch aren't it. they're still not stopping me. Uh, and it has stuck with me my my entire life. I was very young when uh, I saw it, and I all, I can still have nightmares about really yeah the the xenomorphs in them and stuff. So it's a really scary movie. Uh, yeah, that that xenomorph is the alien in it is probably. I mean, that's got to be the scariest movie monster. Yeah. It's probably the scariest thing ever made mm-hmm. by humans. I mean, it's it's pure evil right it's unclouded by conscience or delusions of morality <laughs> is really um, and while the first yeah, thanks. and the first one you know is a horror movie uh the second one which we both agree is the best of yeah it is, is a is an action movie yeah it's not scary it's good right but uh um, yeah it's really weird how how they just kind of flipped it like that yeah it it takes a lot from uh, the uh, Starship Troopers. the The novel is very similar to Aliens. Really? Yeah, and I recommend that I re- recommend that book. Um, the Starship Troopers, the movie, is funny. Yeah, it's Verhoeven. You just got to deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> like... um, but it's nothing like the 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 book Starship Troopers, and it's a short read. Really, uh, and it's more like aliens, and and uh, I will read it. Yeah, I things like uh, they're they're going after bugs. It's a bug hunt and stuff like that. So, uh, but uh, kind of connected to uh, Clockwork Orange, Stanley Kubrick, uh, The Shining. Yeah, that's another like pure horror movie that I I own. This one still, this is like Alien. This still creeps me out. Mm-hmm. The the uh, the furry scene. <laughs> <laughs> remember the blowjob furry yeah. thing. Uh, I remember being like, when I saw this movie when I was a kid, I didn't know what was going on, but um, I knew it wasn't right. Yeah. Actually, when I was an adult, I saw it and I was like, I still don't know what's going on, but it's not right. And it's it's odd that even just like an empty hallway can be scary. Yeah. Just even the carpet pattern yeah. or the wall or something. It's like... The bathroom that's red, it's yeah. not, it's something, something discomforting about it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, just the whole, the, the whole hotel is just terrifying looking. I yeah. Mean, that's really odd that it, it just shows, you know, Stanley Kubrick's ability. Mm-hmm. You know, Stephen King didn't like this movie. Huh. That's why for the longest time I wouldn't read a Stephen King book. I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. Wham, wham. I'm sorry that he made an amazing movie out of your book. But and after reading The Stand, it's like, well, I'll get, I'll read this one eventually. And then they did a, a Shining miniseries. 
With yeah, the, the guy from that Wings. One, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, that one did have, and that was the thing. That one did have Sta- uh, Stephen King's blessing, right, and, that and it was terrible. Yeah. So that's why, for the longest time, I didn't want to. But I know, like, uh, like my friend uh, used to tell me. She used to tell me that uh, that the book was really good. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give it a shot. The one thing about the miniseries, uh, we got a friend Scott. Um, works in television, <laughs> and uh, we will get him to put Take Your Medicine into anything possible. <laughs> and it comes from that miniseries yeah. when he's beaten, <laughs> when the guy from Wings is beating his stepson, and uh, it's time to take your medicine. You know what? And, he, <laughs> and the, the Scott, Scott uh, he delivers it well. <laughs> <laughs> So, He's a creepy guy. Yeah. So, sorry, yeah. Scott. Um, Nothing says fear like Akira. Right. I put Akira into the stack of um, just because you like it. Because <laughs> I was trying to put it into any category possible. But the the nursery scene, yeah, um, is is odd. It's not a horror movie, obviously. But uh, the the scene with the in the nursery with the kids that are telekinetic, psychokinetic. I don't know what, but the that's creepy and stays with you and that's just through like animation and yeah. hand, hand-drawn animation too so i that's one of those scenes that the music even i don't i don't know it's it's a creepy you know i've been meaning to watch this movie for years and a couple years ago i was at uh one of our other true believers schaefer's house and i was like i really want to watch this he's like Oh yeah, we'll watch the parts I like. And he just <laughs> yes. so I've seen the parts that Schaefer likes. <laughs> so it's like I have no idea what's going on in this. You can scene. see a boob in this one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. He's like, "There's a boob. There's a boob. There's something weird." Yeah. <laughs> yeah check out these kids. They're like uh, wrinkly. That's the thing, though. When you're drunk, it's like whatever. <laughs> like I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you told me something about this movie once. Oh, what was that? Um, God, I wish you could remember it. Uh, but I don't know what it was. You been. said about how the impact that this movie had on you when you saw it. You said it like changed your life or something like that. It's, it's the just... reason why I watch anime. Okay, for, yeah. For that's... sure. Um, it was the first anime movie that I, I'd ever seen and and whatnot. So it was, it was that soon followed by the original Ghost in the Shell and uh but akira it's one of my i don't know what to do evening go-to movies Mm -hmm. so um (laughs) so you just (laughs) just really that's your that's your go-to movie is akira it's one of them yeah really yeah that and down with love (laughs) (laughs) which is actually a really good movie it is uh just uh (laughs) throwing that out there uh but um it's the movie I uh, set my TV to, like, it's the uh, oh you the monitor has to like you know really? color and the brightness contrast. So this is the template for how everything should right. look on your television. If if the evening news doesn't look like a Kira, <laughs> I've done something wrong. Something needs adjustment. But it is really what I throw in to the DVD player to get the TV looking the way I want it to look. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what uh Yeah, that's awesome. It's got awesome. a little of everything in it, you know. So and it does have animated boobs. Animated I've seen boobs. those parts. Yeah. Uh There's a show I uh, who cares. <laughs> it's off top. Uh ooh, here's one with Jennifer Lopez. Right, the cell. And a lot of creepiness in that movie. The one that really gets... Have you seen it? The one scene that really gets like to 10 me... 10 years ago. The horse getting sliced by glass and oh, spread yeah. apart. I remember that. That was weird. That really freaked me out. And I was an adult. And I saw that and I did, I did not know what to do with myself the next day. I was... Yeah, that that was pretty weird. Yeah. Um, that's really the scene that, that put it in the stack. It's a... A lot of creepiness and suspense and whatever, but the the horse, the clock strikes the, and the glass comes down, slices the horse, spreads it apart. They've got to walk between it, and 
It is disgusting. You know, going back earlier, you were talking about uh, Alien was Mm -hmm. the movie that scared you as Mm -hmm. a kid. It scared me a lot, too, when I was a kid, and so did Shining. But strangely, in this movie, this movie's nowhere near on the caliber that they are, but it's still a good movie in its own right. Uh, The movie that terrified me when I was a kid was Halloween. Mm -hmm. Like, more than those two, even. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just... There was just something... Something about that movie, it, it's so well done. That movie and another John Carpenter movie that I love, The Thing. Mm-hmm, the I thing. saw that one, like, I think I uh, crapped my pants when I was 10, <laughs> and I saw that when that when that guy's, uh, when they're defibrillating that guy and his stomach turns into a mouth and bites his hand, it bites the dude's arms off. I don't remember that. I remember the guy's head. You don't remember? Up. Yeah, that was the same scene. Oh, okay, yes. And then his I head, falls, the head off falls off and, and a turns new into head a grows out. Yeah. yeah. It, and like it's like right after all that, his head falls off and then spider legs come out and it crawls around. It's like, what yeah. is that? <laughs> or then the um yeah, John Carpenter. Uh but uh the the scariest thing as an adult seeing that though, and you know, that stuff is still creepy. The creepiest thing uh, I think I've ever seen on a movie is that, and it's the dog. And I'm not oh, talking God. about I'm not talking about when he turns into a monster and like tentacles come out and mm. he eats the other dogs with the t- that yeah, and his face explodes. Wait, wait. I'm not talking about that though, and that is scary. But the scariest part is just when the dog is walking around, huh. like like go back and watch it. There's no music, and the camera is just the um, what do they call that effect? Where the camera is just leading him, and uh, this dog is really quiet, and he's very sinister looking. Huh. I don't know how you can make a dog sinister looking, uh-huh. but he is. And the worst part is there's a scene where uh, where um, Kurt Russell and the other dude are coming back from the from the Norwegian camp with that with the thing. They've got the thing the burnt body or whatever Mm -hmm. and that dog is just looking at them through the window and it's like (laughs) i don't know why but that is so scary i have to go back and check that out but yeah uh those two movies Mm -hmm. really the that and halloween really creeped me out when i was a kid the uh with the thing what gave me the most anxiety um that they would uh, test people's blood. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I don't that's... like getting my blood drawn to the point that I have. They have to instead of being in like the chair, would they have like a blood sample? Yeah. They have to lay me down because I will. I'll pass out. You'll pass out. Yeah. yeah. So um, the fact that you had to like get blood. No. Yeah. Uh, they they had to like check the people's blood to make sure the thing that hadn't infected them, that gave me anxiety. Well, that whole scene is messed up because you don't know. It it turns out the the person who is the thing is the person you didn't think it was Mm -hmm. because why would the thing turn itself into a guy who has, like, bad cholesterol and heart problems? Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) what was it thinking by doing that? (laughs) But I guess it knew what it was doing. Uh, Yeah, that that was creepy really creepy yeah and uh the guy that you thought was the thing all along wasn't and he got shot mm-hmm. and it was sad but no it wasn't sad but yeah that man that's that's a good movie i would end up getting shot because i would refuse to take the blood test really you'd panic that much over that yeah i'm pretty sure if i ever got like pulled out they needed to in, instead of they refused to do like a sobriety like breathalyzer and they wanted to do the blood test i'd have to be like just take me to jail really? I, I refuse the test last year i was donating plasma for extra money like like i mean it's only like 50 dollars a month but when you when you're trying to save up for something or pay something off you do it and after a while, you feel like a crackhead. <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like mm-hmm, give me some of that. Take my blood. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't really mind it. I just hate the fact that it's a waste of time. But mm-hmm. I don't really mind it. Uh, I kind of like watching the needle go through my veins oh, and my seeing no, no. like blood pump out of it. It's kind of cool. I can take injections <laughs> with no problem. Uh, going to the dentist doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. It is having blood drawn. And I don't have to look... I can, I just, the idea of it when it's happening 
will like hit my vagus nerve and I'll just pass out. Really? And it's the it's the passing out that's so terrifying to me that I can't. Yeah. I'll avoid it at all costs. I've doc my doctor has asked for blood work, tells me to just go down to the second floor, get the blood work, and I'm free to go or whatever. I'll go out the front door and, and leave. <laughs> and flip them off and <laughs> drive away. And go back next year for my next visit. And uh, they're like, hmm, I don't have uh, blood work. Let's just go down to the second floor and get this You're blood like, work. And you'll never get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see what else you got. You got the cell. Oh. Return to Oz. <laughs> uh, it's a children's movie. Um, but it is. It's uh, scary. You know, I don't think it was meant to be as scary as it is. I don't think so either. And it's like a, it's part of a dark time in children's Yeah, movies. the 80s were, that's 80s, right? Yeah. The 80s were kind of weird about that. It's, because uh, you got like Jim Henson stuff going on, but it is, it's terrifying. The wheelies or wheelers or whatever they're called or yeah. just everything in it. I don't know what happened. It was the same time Disney is doing weird stuff. Um, like, what was that? Like something about Witch Mountain or whatever, or was that one not scary? I don't, I, I don't remember. I don't know about that one. The one they remade with, I, the Return to Rush, Race to Witch Mountain, something, something like that. I'm thinking of uh, something Wicked This Way Comes. It's a Ray Bradbury short story that Disney did as a movie, and hmm. it it's a horror movie. Why was Disney doing that? It's and it was really under good. Disney and not Touchstone. I believe it was under Disney. Really. <laughs> It's like, and it's live action, and it's a really good story, but it deals with like a circus, and the devil's the ringleader of the circus, like sideshow circusy thing. Really? And a kind of coming to age sort of thing. And this Return to Oz is has a lot of that, this same dark, Well, dirty... there's this like pumpkin head guy. What is that? That's horrifying looking. Yeah. I mean, I remember the robot thing. Is this supposed to be the scarecrow, that pumpkin dude? He's... Separate from the Scarecrow. I believe the Scarecrow might even be like the King of Oz at this point or something. What? I, uh, it's been so long. And then there's another, there's like another princess, like a, a good witch, Princess of Oz. Or uh, she, I don't think she's a witch. I think she's like the Princess of Oz is trapped in mirrors. And uh, it's, uh, it's a disturbing movie for a you know kid's the movie. thing is the the original Wizard of Oz is such an American classic right and then they put this out <laughs> have you seen the James Franco one yet? Huh? I oh, haven't yes. either uh, I downloaded it and I've never gotten around to it I I did it changes the tone if you put it as canon it changes the, co- <laughs> the tone <laughs> it changes the tone of the Wizard of Oz. Really? And you start to feel, just kind of like Wicked, you feel sorry for the witch. Like, I'm not going to give away the the great, and power, the, uh, the great and powerful Oz, whatever happens, but you end up, you realize, like, the the Wizard of Oz screwed over the witch. Really? And you're like, dang, I don't blame her. Yeah. And then this jerk gets Dorothy to do his dirty work. Forget him. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Ugh, God, I'm just looking at the back of this. This looks like the scariest thing you brought. And I'm just I looking at the back of this. I think his name's TikTok or something. Yeah. He's kind of like he's the equivalent of the, the Tin, tin man. man. And instead Look of a cowardly weird moose, he's he's the cowardly lion. The moose is like the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And they tie him to a couch and. I don't know. It whoa, is... whoa, whoa, whoa. This is weird. It looks like it's just a moose's head. Yeah. And they tie it to a couch and put palm fronds as wings and he flies around. It's a, it's an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that away. Yeah. <laughs> and here's one that I saw once and it was really good. I've only seen this once also. Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, spooky uh, Del Toro movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the classic guy with the eyeballs in his hands. Yeah, that was spooky. Uh, kind of creepy ending. Um, she's she's dead, and I don't know if you remember. Like, she never she didn't survive the the civil war. The the war, War. yeah. So she goes back to with her mom and dad to live as the princess, but she's she's dead. Really. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it, it's been a long time since I've seen it, and it's in subtitles, and I'm sure I was drunk. Yeah, I've I can seen almost it that always one assume. Time, yeah. If most of these movies, <laughs> and I was drunk. <laughs> if I was awake. <laughs> And, of course, uh, you've got the Simpsons tree, tree House, House of Horrors. Horrors. What was your favorite? Annual tradition. Uh, the the episode, uh, Homer goes into 3D space. Yeah. And it's computer generated. Uh, and I believe that, let's see, that was the Tree House Six. of Horrors. Six. Yeah. Yep. Uh for some reason, I've got five, six, seven, and twelve. <laughs> and I don't know under- which one is twelve. I don't understand why, but I, I, hex in the it. city. And I can't recall any hex. of those. Yeah, somewhere around season eleven or twelve or whatever. I I quote caring about yeah. that show. You know what's replaced it for me is Bob's Burgers. That's a good show. Yeah, it's really good. good and I've been trying to get people to watch. Uh, my wife was uh, Tina for. For Halloween this year. Um, Is that what she was? Yeah. (laughs) I get it now. I saw the picture. I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. (laughs) So I I made a a book, like a composition book that said uh, friend, uh, erotic friend fiction. (laughs) And she went to a party dressed as Tina holding that book. And everyone at the party drew horses into the, into it. And she wrote about butts and stuff, so. <laughs> Bob's Burgers, better than The Simpsons. You know, the thing is, though, about The Simpsons, I will say, after the movie, I don't I don't know if, I think they got better. Hmm. Like, they're not, they're not great. They're not classics. But if you look at it that way, it's like, no, these are not classics. The classics came out 20 freaking years ago. Mm-hmm. It's still funny. It's right. still a good show. It's still better than Family Guy. Yeah. It's better than a lot of things out there. It's better than live action stuff. It's Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just how good the old ones were. Right. My favorite Treehouse of Horror was actually Five with the Shinning or mm. the Shining parody. I love that because the running gag through that one is all three of the storylines. Willie gets axed. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the... Uh, I think it's, oh, uh, which one is it? I think it's the same one. Yeah, it's the same one with the uh, 3D Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, one where Willie is Freddy Krueger. That one's pretty yeah. funny. I've forgotten about <laughs> that. Like, he, he's wearing the bad sweater and the fedora, and you see the the silhouette shadow. And it looks like he has claws, but it's just a rake. <laughs> he says, I'd like to rake your acquaintance. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> but yeah, Freddy Krueger, that one's uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. That one's a good one, too. Have I've you... never seen that one. I've never seen <laughs> what? The, I've never seen any of the Nightmare. I don't like <laughs> what? I actually don't like scary movies. And that's why the stack here is kind of thin and just really with like. Most kind of these are pretty good, though. Right. But um, you've never seen. I'm gonna make you watch it. It's not that scary. I mean, I imagine now it isn't to me. But as a kid, when they were coming out, <laughs> that the Chucky Child's Play the, movies. What? You've never seen those? I've seen them. And they they seen scared them? me, and I didn't. The first watch one's it. pretty good, actually. The first Child's Play. I didn't like them. Uh, Hellraiser. You would be in a Hellraiser. <laughs> that, <laughs> I like Hellraiser too. I'm a, and I'm okay with it. It's odd that the first one is so much different. It's like the Alien series where I the never first saw one, the sequels. They're so much different than the first one, and really? it's it's different the way Alien and Aliens and Alien Three and it's like. Well, it's interesting how what the Hellraiser, the Cenobite, Pinhead, and the Cenobites, <laughs> which always sounds like a delicious snack to yeah. me, but. Uh, they uh they're barely in that movie. Right, it's like, about the uncle. Yeah, who's the, like made of blood. Frank. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what the movie's about: killing people to turn him back into flesh. One of my favorite lines. My friend and I still have been quoting it for like ten years, but <laughs> it's a pretty bad line. But uh, Frank, when he's a undead zombie or something, uh, says to his lover, "Come." here. Come here, damn it! I want to kiss you. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, what's his name? Clive, Clive Barker. Cl- yeah, Clive Barker. And it's like, yeah, okay, like. Yeah. 
<laughs> like you know that I mean it, it, you would love those those movies though like they're pretty weird yeah they're out there um but it really was like the the pinhead was not really meant to be part of the well i mean he he wasn't the main attraction the story was yeah guy having his lover murder other guys which was weird yeah she'd bring him she'd uh in that movie she uh brings these guys home from the bar Mm -hmm. Uh, they go with her to go get laid, and then her zombie husband, uh, or does she ask him, or does the zombie husband do it? I don't know. It's been so long. I think it starts, she does it, but as he gets stronger, he starts axing them, Mm -hmm. too. But, uh, yeah, it's really weird. (laughs) It's a really weird movie. Yeah. And then he's after his niece, which is creepy. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Doesn't he kill his brother or something? Yeah. Oh, he turns into his brother. Turns into his brother, yeah. This is a really... It's it's this really like weird. like his blood... The brother's blood is what like goes through the floorboards. Oh, that's right. The whole thing is... That's is right. Odd. Yeah. It's an odd series. Yeah, it is. It's it's one big... I mean, it's one big... Uh, fes- it's one big, like, metaphor or whatever for, like, bondage and S&M, right? I mean, it's... It's pretty out there with the... Yeah. And they get that way as they go on. More, you know, it's like people realize that's what the audience wanted. You know, so yeah. instead of being about Frank and whatever, it's more about Pinhead. The I believe he's a World War Two. Uh, oh yeah, pilot that's right. And, May, I have seen the second one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And they just spend a lot more time torturing people and hooks and chains and spikes and stuff and then you know going back to freddy krueger uh uh which is nowhere near as weird as hellraiser but uh i i am kind of a wes craven fan uh i love that one i love scream i love uh i love uh hills have eyes the original one i even like last house on the left and i know that's like one that like like I, I really can't watch it anymore. It's too messed up. But uh, there was a time and place for that movie. I think. I mean, it's it is what it is. It's it's a very dirty movie. But uh, no. Uh, what else? Um, how long have we been it, yakking? We're up to forty two minutes. Oh my! It's probably um, time for some. It's mail time. It's it's mail time. Here's the mail. It's, it's never time. fails. <laughs> let's see yeah so basically tomb of dracula it's about dracula <laughs> but uh um, all right I'm, oops i'll grab that thanks i'm gonna read this first one uh they call the uh tomes from the tower uh dear stan archie and gene um today i picked up tomb of dracula number three it was much better than the previous two issues art wise and story wise Whatever you do, don't let Tom Palmer slip away from his inking chores on Dracula. Because he and Gene are made for the strip. The only real gripe I had about the strip is the cover of issue number three. Color-wise, it was magnificent. But I hate, really hate, the word balloons. Especially on covers of such magazines as Dracula, Werewolf by Night, or any of your magazines, in fact. Please, Stan... Get rid of them, at least on the werewolf and Dracula. And like, oh, okay, this guy doesn't like word balloons. Let's just, you know what? Why don't we just so make a silent. book? <laughs> it's the opposite of talkies. <laughs> Another thing about the cover of Ish 3 was that Dracula looked so old. Come on, Gene or Tom, whoever drew the cover. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have time to find out. Dracula may be pretty old. But let's not push it too far. Van Helsing and her friendly bodyguard. I guess Van Helsing is a girl. In the... That's a if I would have bothered reading more than issue one, I would have known that. Van Helsing and her friendly bodyguard, Taj, are superb characters and should be kept around with, the, with Frank to fight Dracula. One thing, though. Please make her more ladylike. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she acted just like a man in many ways, and I feel like if things go right, she and Frank could get to know each other more and more as the series progresses. <laughs> oh, he just wants her to get married. Uh, 
get my hint? <laughs> After all, Frank needs someone more than just a mere friend, and he would fight. And he would fight Dracula with more f- fury than ever before if he loved Rachel and knew the evil count would destroy her. As for Clifton Graves, I feel it's just a matter of time till he goes bye bye. Thanks. That's thanks spelled with an X. Before for li- time. Bef- yeah, I know he's he's a um, he's a wordsmith. We're here to blame him. <laughs> we can blame him for society. Thanks for listening, and now I can just hope my letter will be printed. And that's Clint Higginbotham from Denison, Texas. All right, here's what they have to say, and here it is, Clint, in blazing black and white. As we've tried to explain before, the word balloons on our covers, for some inexplicable reason, really seem to have a positive effect on the sales of the book. In other words, we can't get rid of them without chancing the loss of some customers, and if we lose too many customers and the magazine goes, well, wouldn't you really rather just have word balloons? Uh, Return. Rachel Van Helsing, we feel somehow, that the great-granddaughter of a vampire slayer, much less a woman who's taken up the profession herself, would tend to be the self-reliant type Archie portrayed in that story. Which is not to say that a deeper relationship... (coughs) Excuse me. That a deeper relationship between her and Drax's descendant is out of the picture. Let's just wait and see how our little legend develops, okay? Whoever wrote that reply, I like him. Yeah. Like, he really laid into that jerk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the last time he writes a letter. Uh, Although the Clint Hickenbach and whatever sounds like a made-up name to it me. It does sound like... I think I think these are all made These up. are ringers. <laughs> they get to get all their frustration out. We're putting the words on the screen, damn it. Uh... Dear Stan and friends, er, friends, fiends. <laughs> i got to work on my reading comprehension. It's only downhill from here. About Miss Margaret Watson's letter in Tomb of Dracula number three. First of all, vampires are not destroyed by a stake driven through the heart. The stake only places them in sort of suspended animation. Stuffing the vampire's mouth with garlic and chopping its head off are supposed to be done... After driving the stake through his heart. How does he know? He's an expert. <laughs> I don't... Uh, Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> no, you're, you're saving this. It's good. Uh, this keeps him from coming back to life if the stake is removed. I agree that the silver does not harm vampires, but it is deadly against witches, demons, and werewolves. <laughs> Also, the sun's rays do not destroy vampires. Exposed to the sun, the vampire is thrown into the pits of hell. Wait. Deadly? Let's see. It says he, the sun's rays do not destroy vampires. But then he says, exposed to the sun, the vampire is thrown into the pits of hell, where he can be controlled by other demons or witches. I guess that's not destroyed. Uh... Now that that's over, I'd like to say a few things about the mag itself. Oh, here we go. I've been reading the Avengers for a long while. They were the only superheroes I ever liked. My true likes were horror and science fiction. When I read about the new title called Tomb of Dracula, I just had to get it. So far, I have seen three issues. I've disagreed with David uh, Michelini's Gene... Colin's art is fantastic. Uh, I have a few suggestions. Have Rachel and Frank fall in love with each other? <laughs> again. <laughs> I'd like to see Frank and Dracula locked in a deadly combat again like they were in issue two. Well, that's all. And until the Marvel Comics Group becomes the least known comic company in the U.S., make mine Marvel. Bobby Summercamp, uh, St. <laughs> Petersburg, Florida. His name is Summercamp? Summer Con- Summer. Comp, yes, summer camp. <laughs> Bobby Summer Camp. <laughs> that's gonna be my new band name. That's like that's like a <laughs> it's Bobby Summer Camp. <laughs> like a Fletch Lives name. <laughs> Paul Limongello and Bobby Summer Camp. Uh, poor guy, he's probably listening to this. <laughs> probably, he probably um, killed himself. 
<laughs> that's the horror ending of our show. Yeah. We've been dead the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're the 13th ghost. <laughs> <laughs> the reply is, but Bobby, we're the least known comic company in Upper Slobivia, or did you have another U.S. in mind? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks for that, Full guys. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Looks like we got another one. Dear Stan and Company. I... <laughs> And <laughs> Dear Oliver and Company, uh, I have been a longtime follower of Marvel, but never have any of your heroes or heroines. Ooh, yeah, good. Ooh, he's 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 on top of it. He knows what this he knows what this uh, women's lib thing the future. is. Future, he's the future. <laughs> and their monthly exploits prompted me to write you, but with Dracula, you have struck a string in my soul. I believe your new efforts has. I believe your new effort has merit and is capable of very interesting expansion. To have the immortal, to have the immortal Count Dracula. Good God! What the hell happened to me? Loose and wandering the entire European countryside is by far the most refreshing addition to the long list of vampirific endeavors. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what Dracula always does. Doesn't he just kind of wander around Europe? Yeah. yeah. Or something, I don't know. Uh, if you can build around the legend and add some of your own imaginative ingredients, Tomb of Dracula should be with us for a long time. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, issue 3 was by far the most excellent, most excellent, with regard to both plot and art. Keep Archie Goodwin... I am very familiar with his executions in Creepy and Vampirella. Gene Cullen is a must for overall Dracula atmosphere. I I well remember the enchantments he concocted for Doc Strange. From a very knowledgeable gal concerning vampires, most unholy success with Dracula. I will... Wait, hold on. From a very knowledgeable gal concerning vampires, most unholy success with Dracula. That's not a sentence. (laughs) Maybe that's supposed to be a comma. I will follow it until the bat of midnight uh, flies nevermore. And that's from Adriana Gomez. Ooh, she was a goth chick, I guess. Uh, I was about to say, (laughs) she's in the goths. (laughs) From, uh, From Tampa, Florida. She probably watched all of the, uh, what was that show called with the thing, with the vampire, that soap opera show? Uh, oh God, what is it? Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows. She probably watched all the Dark Shadows and wore all the black. Sounds hot. (laughs) (laughs) For, uh, here's what, uh, someone has to say. For this issue and next, the scripting, the scripting chores on the... Counts have been handed over to yet another author, long noted for his occult opuses, none other than Gardner Fox. Amiable Archie, meanwhile, may be found on the pages of Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, one of Marvel's most applauded new series of <laughs> 72. This is going places. <laughs> Because Luke Cage never became a C-list hero after that. Uh, Despite the uh, change of scripters, though, Adriana, Adriana, your ideas on Dracula seem to run parallel with ours. Ooh, they think the goth chick's hot, too. Uh, As we did with uh, Thor, we're out to create a whole new mythology around the Prince of Darkness. So keep haunting your local newsstands. Because we'll be hanging out there looking for you. Yeah. Hey, Adriana, did you read our new magazine yet? Uh, Let's see. So, blah, blah, blah. We've got a hunch you'll be able to sink your teeth into what's coming. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. That is dirty. Yeah. (laughs) Listeners, don't use your teeth. No, no, don't use teeth. Unless 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 you're into it for it which he did so he did he did uh there's also a stan soapbox i think i'll read uh no some you know what the stan soapbox is 
Stan's soapbox was uh, his little editorial. That's when he writes like a couple paragraphs about whatever bullshit is going through his mind at the moment. Um, it's impressive because he does it fairly frequently. <laughs> and there's a lot of comics. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be ripping these things up. Yeah. He just, he He's just, opinionated. He is. Uh, know something? We bulletiners are so excited about all the new mags we're creating for you that I don't know which to talk about first. So instead of just... You see, and of course he's selling us something. So instead of just beating the drums for Claws of the Cat, Journey into Mystery, Jungle Action, Gunhawks, <laughs> Night Nurse... There was one called Night Nurse? Huh? I need to find that one. Night Nurse, Doc Savage, or Shauna the She-Devil. <laughs> All of those titles became very successful. I'm not even going to mention him. I'll leave it to Rascally Roy to clue you in elsewhere on this page. Now, in, in following issues. Instead, I'll just take another few secs to say hi to all the great guys and gals I met during my most recent lecture tour at the Nassau Community College, the Universities of Winnipeg and Manitoba, Nashville, Tennessee's Vanderbilt U., and good old Montana State. And in case you think that the mighty Marvel craze is just a passing fad, you change your mind faster than Spidey can wiggle a web if you could, <laughs> if you could have shared the wondrous welcomes at those hallowed halls of learning. See, that'll prove I really can write a couple of sentences without plugging one of our Titanic titles. T titles such as Wyatt Earp, Gothic Thrillers, <laughs> Afternoon uh, Nurse. Uh, forgive me, gang. This is a heck of a way for a doctor of comicology to behave. Behave, Excelsior. Hmm. Those are always pretty funny. At least he has a sense of humor about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, those are always pretty good. Yeah, like, it's just, it's funny, like, all these titles, you know, like, Jungle Action and Night Nurse and all these weird uh, things that they were doing back then. I guess, you know, they had more freedom because there was no code to live by. Mm -hmm. So I think they were trying to get away from a lot of the superhero thing, but mm -hmm. I think superheroes just kind of took over for comics by that point. But, yeah. That was fun. That was fun. I like the, I like the letters. <laughs> it's really the best part of the show. Why do I save that for last? Because yeah. we make the viewer, <laughs> we make the listener get through. <laughs> I put him through hell before he can go to heaven. We want only the true believers <laughs> listening to the fun part. Yeah, that's you and who else? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, uh, any plans for Halloween? Uh, I plan to hide in the basement. Uh, my wife likes to answer the door. I do not. As you were, I just wanted to point out as uh, his wife was leaving, she was like, here's the bowl of cake. Here's the bowl. Empty bowl. <laughs> I'll fill it up, but get home as soon as you can because I'm not answering the door. <laughs> I'll fill it up, but I draw, I, that's where I draw the line. I'll put it by the door. <laughs> so she promised she'll drive straight home. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I I don't know. I wish... I should like Halloween more in theory. In theory, I like it. In practice, it's like communism, though. So <laughs> It's just... I don't know. It's just... I guess I'm not really much of a party person, surprisingly. That's why I have a podcast about comic books. Um, well, I think that does it. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think... Any other good. movies you like? Oh, I like the Evil Dead movies. Those are good. They're good? They are good. Um, vampire movies in general. We haven't even... Didn't even yeah, I, I know. Uh, <laughs> interview well, we, with a Vampire. Interview. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bra oh, Bra excuse me. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola's... Bram Stoker's Dracula. Dracula yeah. Uh, yeah, that one's good. That one has uh, Gary Oldman. Of course, I love the the Christopher Lee ones, the Hammer mm. ones. Those are really good. Um, of course, Bela Lugosi. Mm -hmm. Did you know that, you know, back in those days, instead of just subtitling, they would, 
actually have a Hispanic cast do the night shift and they'd remake the movies. It, it's really weird. Like they'd use the same set, <coughs> the same set and same um, same equipment, but uh, they'd remake Just the movies remake on third shift, huh. like graveyard shift, and do it. Supposedly, the Spanish Dracula is better than the uh, American one, even though it doesn't have Bela Lugosi. Uh-huh. And what's interesting is, to be honest, as, as cool as the Bela Lugosi Dracula is, um, as a movie, it probably is my least favorite out of the all the Universal ones. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just really kind of, I mean, it's really kind of clunky and mm-hmm. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And Although I do like Fritz. Yeah, Fritz. <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to see that. Oh, no, not Fritz. It's the same actor, but he's called something else. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Um, but the Frankenstein ones are good, especially Bride of Frankenstein. I like that mm, one. So I hadn't seen that. Oh, you you'd like it. Mm. It's it's better than the first one, actually. Mm. Um, Invisible Man is pretty good. I watched uh, the wife and I watched uh, Invisible Man the nineteen thirties. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, we watched it. Just uh, it's on Netflix streaming if you want to check it out. Pretty good special effects. Yeah, for the back special in. effects are uh, they held up better than Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jurassic Park looks pretty good. Yeah. Or okay, well, yeah. how about it, they held up better than Aliens Three? Yeah, the Alien and Aliens Three looks like cra- <laughs> it looks like a looks like the Terminator Two. Yeah, but it's not meant to be liquid metal. Yeah, the uh, like remember when he's smoking a cigarette, like. I mean, you know it's on a string, but the way they did it looks pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. It looks like an Invisible Boy guy really is doing it. Uh, the Mummy's good. Have you ever seen that one? No, no. It's a lot different than you'd think. I mean, it's got... Um... Oh, sh- shit. What's his name? Frankenstein. What... Why can't I remember his name? Sorry, sometimes you kind of... The pressure of being in front of this microphone makes you forget things. But... Um... What is his name? Why can't I think of it? Yeah, I played Frankenstein. I don't know. God darn it. Well, anyway, it'll come to me after the show. <laughs> but um, he uh, he plays the mummy in this, but it's a lot different than you'd think. It, uh, it's, it's kind of... He's not really bandaged up very long. I mean, he's kind of just this evil sorcerer for most of the movie. I guess sort of like the Brendan Fraser ones, except mm. except it's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have seen the I've seen the Brendan Fraser ones. Yeah, what would you think of that? They were okay. They were they were okay when they came out. There wasn't really anything else yeah. out at that time though. Um, you know, another Universal one I like, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Hmm. You'd think that that one wouldn't be very good. It's really good. Hmm. It's really good. But. Yeah, they just don't make scary movies. Oh, of course, Shaun of the Dead. That one's the best. Uh, I think that's actually the best horror movie of the decade. It's I can't. It's gonna go down in in history. I think. Yeah, it's it's gonna go down there, go up there with like Ghostbusters mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, it's it's a really good movie. I just watched it again the other day. But all right, well, I hope you guys had a horrifying hour with us. It's uh, it's a fright night, terrifying, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hope you all have a safe Halloween, um, and thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs>